new consumer credit activity cools off after a hot summer, trouble rising in mortgage, and consumers showing the pressure still on. I'm Jeff Richardson, host of Vantage Score's Credit Gauge Live, and I'm joined as always by our lead analysts, Susan Fay and Atif Mirsa. Susan, first question to you. Uh, I talked about the hot summer for credit originations. What's the situation for new credit more recently? Thank you, Jeff. New account originations slowed in September um, after a strong summer. And so what we've seen is month over month, so comparing August to September, across all product categories, new account originations declined. Uh, they were led by personal loans, followed by credit cards, and then auto loans, and then finally mortgages. And what's most notable about this is when you look at the auto loan product line and mortgages um, for this so far year to date, so for since January until September, new account originations for those two products in particular have been relatively subdued. Uh, this is mainly due to um, the economic headwinds that consumers are, are facing, as well as affordability in those products. Interesting, Susan. So that's the story on originations. Atif, on the delinquency sides, uh, what particular products are showing increased delinquency rates? And thank you, Jeff. So yes, this month we saw delinquencies ro rose for mortgages across the board. In September, uh, mortgage delinquencies rose month over month as well as year over year, uh, all the way in all stages from early stage 30 to 59 day past due and 90 to 119 day uh, late stage delinquencies as well. Uh, what really stands out, Jeff, is that late stage delinquencies in mortgage, they hit the highest level since uh, before the pandemic, in January of 2020. And second, across compared to all other products, mortgage delinquencies grew the fastest year over year. Now, this signals that uh, payment pressure is uh, building uh, in mortgage space. Uh, consumers are facing high burdens, interest rate fatigue, and um, as well as uh, the reality is earnings are not uh, going up and, and that's squeezing the borrowers. So Atif, you, you touched on late stage delinquencies. That's usually an indicator of potential charge offs. Early stage delinquencies are an indicator of future risk as well. Susan, how are early stage delinquencies trending? Thank you, Jeff. In September, what we saw is early stage delinquencies, um, which is defined as 30 to 59 days past due, has reached a year to date high of 1.13%. And um, when we look back at pre pandemic levels, it's actually inching up to almost that th threshold. So in the pre-pandemic, the 30-day uh, past due category was, um, the delinquency rate was 1.15%, and uh, and now we're at 1.13%. So um, it's very close to pre-pandemic levels. Wow, that, that's interesting. Thank you both. Uh, it doesn't really appear that consumers are closing out the year and heading into the holiday shopping season in a particular position of strength. And so we'll be monitoring these trends very closely. Um, and next up, we're going to be talking to our special guest, um, and it's none other than VantageCore's longest tenured employee, Dr. Andrada Pacheco, uh, our chief data scientist. There has been a flurry of news around VantageCore and credit scores recently, and it's actually been a quite a one-sided affair with VantageCore coming out on top. Stick around, we'll be back with Andrada. Welcome back to Credit Gauge Live, and I am super pleased to be joined by someone who I've known longer than I've actually known some of my children, and I'm speaking, of course, of Dr. Andrada Pacheco, one of our longest tenured employees here at Vantage Core. She is our chief data scientist. And uh, Andrada, first of all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Actually, it's been a pleasure to work with you all these years as well. Well, thank you. Um, so, uh, Andrada, for the first time ever in Vantage Core's history, uh, you and your team have had a very unique opportunity to actually compare Vantage Core 4.0 to, to FICO Classic, which is the score that has been required for use by mortgage lenders for over 30 years. We know that's all changed. FHFA has has, has announced that Vantage Core 4.0 is, is uh, approved and available to be used. But first of all, how is it possible that you're able to do this analysis for the first time ever? Well, for the first time ever, Jeff, uh, we had uh, access to a data set of tens of millions of loans uh, from Fannie uh, Mae and Freddie Mac that uh, spanned over 10 years. And that was the first time, um, you know, probably in the history of the company as I know it, when we could see a Vantage Core 4 
side by side or on the same loan as a classic FICO. And this data set was released to the market last year. Uh, and mostly, uh, you know, the intention of releasing this data was for the market to understand how Vantage Core 4 compares in terms of score distributions or performance even with the incumbent classic FICO. S super interesting, Andrada. Um, this begs the question, what did your team find? The message is clear from our analysis. Vantage Core 4 outperforms classic FICO uh, for mortgages over the entire 10-year mortgage data set. And particularly, what we've seen is that up to 13% more defaults are captured by Vantage Core 4 when you compare classic FICO over an entire time period analyzed and around 11% um, lift in performance. Um, additionally, Vantage Core 4 provides consistent performance in different economic cycles. Particularly when you look at the pre-pandemic loans entering the pandemic periods where the defaults were much higher than usual, Vantage Core 4 actually captures 49% more uh, of those loans than comparing with classic FICO. Really interesting, Andrada, and I should mention two things. One, that the analysis is available in a white, uh, white paper on VantageScore.com, and that it includes actually a mapping between VantageScore 4 and FICO Classic through all of the score bands in the model. So uh, you can actually see what a 620 Vantage Score 4.0 score might equate to based on the data set you, you observed. Um, so um, shifting gears a little bit, uh, nearly every mortgage lender in the country has either completed a back test or is in the process of it. And we're moving from, from that analysis phase to more of an installation phase. And so you tend to do a validation and there's model risk management questions that come in. And I know one of the questions that your team has been getting is how did you use machine learning in the development of Vantage Gore 4.0? So could you speak to that? Sure. Um, that's a great question. And it's a question that we get all the time from our in, in our interactions with lenders. Vantage Core 4 um, uses machine learning techniques to create more predictive performance. However, any generic credit scoring models like our models are highly regulated and they need to be transparent and explainable. Therefore, what we uh, ended up doing creatively was taking machine learning, in particular a random forest technique, and uh, create attributes or create variables to input in the model um, that would give us a little bit more insight into um, you know, sparse credit file or consumers that have not as much information on their credit files that are usually traditionally underserved. And then putting that information with FCRA compliant attributes into a logistic regression that is very transparent and explainable. So innovative and transparent, uh, that's awesome. And it is amazing to, to finally be here along with you and, and seeing VantageCore 4.0 being used in the mortgage market. Uh, Andrada, uh, thank you so much for, for joining Credit Gage Live. And thank, thank you for you. being such an amazing colleague over the years. Thank you. So as always, you can go to VantageCore.com to use Credit Gage, the tool. It's completely open source and available, or you can download the monthly analysis. So until next month, I'm Jeff Richardson. Thank you for watching Credit Gage Live.